So as a pitcher, it's very important to have mound presence. So today, that's what we're talking about. Let's do it. Today I'm here with my guy Pete Andrelzik. He's a bullpen pitcher with the Barnstormers and um, also a media guy, works in the front office and does a lot of things, a lot of tricks of the trade. But he gets extremely locked in when it's time to pitch. So we're gonna talk about mound presence. What's mound presence, you might ask? Well, mound presence is when you get on that mound, how do you feel about yourself? Are you confident in your stuff, your pitches, and going out there and getting out? So there's cer certain things a lot of guys do to get themselves locked in. Uh, Pete, what's your kind of thing about getting focused and getting going for the game? Uh, a lot of different things, honestly. I don't think it boils down to one thing that you can tell everybody they, they have to do. I don't think there's any any real just solid, this is it, do this and you'll be good. Um, everybody's got, it's funny I, when, I'm over, when I'm working with kids and things like that, I always tell them, and it sounds funny to say, but I always tell them they're snowflakes. Not any single one's gonna be the same, so they always have to do they always they have to have something different. They can't try to. They can try to mold themselves after whoever they want to be, right. but they're always there's always going to be that one little thing that's different from somebody else. So, for me, it's just finding, you know, what's working that day and getting on it. And it's never having those those super highs or super lows and just trying to react the same way to every situation. I mean, I think if you're going to react to anything, it's it's much better to react. You know when something good happens rather than that negative reaction because a lot more people will take that and use that as fuel against you right. instead of just that, that positive energy that you can bring. So. Yeah, so I know like a starting pitcher, you know, he usually has all day to focus on his, his start. He gets the newspaper, he looks at it, and see who's in the lineup against him that day so he can start preparing early. Now with a bullpen guy, it's a little bit different because things change in the game, new guys come in, you got switch hitters, so I know for us it's important. Pete always keeps a lineup down there, and we know right-hander, left-hander, and that's like his thing. He's actually taken the lineup into the game with him a couple times. I've pitched with the lineup in my back pocket. And we didn't have it, but... Um, that's on me, that one's on me. What part of um, and preparation is important for us um, when it comes down to knowing what's going on in the game? I think just, just understanding what your role is. And like you said, a lot of times roles can change. You, it, as, a, as a bullpen guy, you're not gonna go in the same situation every time. You can't just say, hey, I'm not used to pitching in the eighth inning and I only pitch against right-handers who are hitting under 270. You don't, I mean, you don't have parameters that you're always gonna pitch in. So just being ready to pitch at any one scenario that, that might pop up in the game. And I mean, my whole thing is just when they call your name, that's when you, that's when you play the game. And you can't sit here and whine about the uh, the conditions or anything like that. So you have to have a routine that it may be a, a full day routine, but once it gets time to lock it in, you have to have that that short, succinct routine that you can get into quick that really can take you into the game in that way. Because once you get into the game, that's your it's your job. Yeah. I mean, you got to lock it in. You got to do your job. You have an off day. And, you don't just it's not you don't get a mulligan yeah, you gotta go out that stays on your stats that stays on your career resume mm -hmm. so you know people remember that stuff and i know for young guys you know you may be playing other positions and coming directly into a game so in that situation you're already playing the game you're watching those hitters you should have an idea of who you're playing and how you're going to approach those hitters even if you're for instance a shortstop and you're coming in to pitch you should know this guy's a full hitter and know how you want to pitch him and you're already watching the game and seeing how the pitcher before is attacking that guy. So I think a lot of preparation happens by just watching the game. Open your eyes and don't be in the dugout clowning around throwing seeds at each other, but be, be paying attention, you know? And that will really help when it's your time to get out there because you're already locked in, you already know what is expected of you and know what you need to do to execute. Yeah, I think that's huge too. I think the fact that there's a time when you can, obviously baseball's fun, it's meant to be fun, it's a kid's game, and we, uh, we're we fortunate enough to be able to get, you know, we get paid to play a kid's game, which is, is the best thing in the world to me. But there is also a time when, hey, if you want to make this into your career, you want to go on and do certain things in this game, that you really do have to start taking it seriously. And no matter, like you said, if you're playing shortstop left field and you come into a game, that's where I think that mound presence and that, that pre-pitch routine, it's not just for hitters, it's pre-pitch routine, you can, I mean, when I was in school, we, in college at Coastal Carolina, we called, they were we were one pitch warriors. Mm -hmm. We had one pitch was our our game, and we had however many games that day. Yeah. 
So if we threw 50 pitches in a game, yeah. we had, I just had 50 different games. Right. And I had to win every single one of those games for me to be successful. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And um, hitting on one, one last thing, when we talk about mound presence, I always talk to guys, when you're on that mound, you're on the tallest point on the field. You are commander in chief. When a batter steps in the box, he's looking up to you. You should be looking down on him with the feeling of, I'm in control of this at bat. Never let a batter step in the box and take your confidence away. As soon as you step on that mound out there, you're the guy. And I talk to guys about, you know, you know, some guy like Pete's down like this, but he's ready to go. He's in a ready position. You see it in his eyes. You see it in the way he's holding himself and in his body language. Body language is huge. If you walk up there and you're scared and you feel that type timid, the hitter's gonna see it and they're gonna feast a feast on you. But if you walk up there with the mindset, I'm about to blow your doors off and get you out, they also feel that and then they'll be back on their heels and not be taking those swings that you know they 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 wanna take. So presence is it's mental, it's physical, it's all incumbent incumbent. Encompassing. Encompassing is the word. It's all encompassing. Vocabulary lesson too. Boom. Check out that word definition for you young ballers out there. I think one thing to add to that too is, is we always talk about this with our catchers, is you'd rather throw the wrong pitch with conviction and believe in it as a pitcher than throw the right pitch technically in that situation and not believe in it. Because if you throw that pitch that you don't believe in, there's you're not going to put a lot behind it. You're not going to have that, that conviction and that really you want to throw it down and in or your catcher wants to throw it down and in fastball and you don't believe in it you're not going to put it there you're not going to put it there with as much as you would if you believed in that pitch so you in that situation you you go with what you want all right and if it you have to have, you have to be man enough too to say go up to your pitching coach and say hey that's what i believed in we got beat on it but that's that's me you know what and and hopefully you have a good enough coach yeah. where that discussion happens and yeah. you know you go from there but and if like, you're a young guy where your coach calls pitches and things like that, believe in your coaches. They're there to help you. So if you're not on the same page, take a step off. Get locked in and focus in on what that coach wants you to do. Because you're going to be much better off believing in that coach and believing in that pitch than second-guessing yourself and not throwing a good pitch up there. But always find out what they had in mind. Don't be afraid to have that conversation with them. The, the more conversations you can have with your coaches, your coaches, your catchers, everybody, the smarter it's going to make you. You get into that next situation, you'll know exactly what you're supposed to do, and you can you can get on that same page with your catchers. Once you, you get there and you start moving quick, things take off. Boom. So with that being said, let's keep on balling. Is that what you say at the end of every one? Yeah, I always do. Nice. So if you like that video, please comment on there and put me a like right there. It really helps my page. And subscribe. Please subscribe. I will have new videos coming weekly. And if you want, go check out my vlogs down in the bottom. I'll leave a little link. And uh, just keep on watching. Every week I'll be bringing new information to you guys. I'll have different players every week. This will be my first video from this summer with our team here in Lancaster. Thank you guys for watching and keep on balling.